Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have some fun with do-it-yourself visual effects. All right, two reasons why I wanted to do this uh, tutorial. One is so we can have some fun with the family. And uh, two, to show what happens when you cut someone out of the background and you don't have something underneath it. I get a lot of questions about that and they ask, well, how do you cut someone out of the background? Well, that's pretty easy. The problem is filling in the hole that you remove. Okay, let me show you three different uh, special effects that I did um, over at my buddy's house. His family jumped in and the kids were willing to participants in this and they did a great job. So each one is a little bit more complicated. Let's go through all of them. Okay, now I want to show you the raw footage that I shot for each one of those. So here is the flying girl. And this is a clean plate. A clean plate means it's a shot with no person in it. The subject is not in it. And you do that, which I'll show you in a second, to have something when you remove the person this is the clean plate. You don't have to fill it in. If you don't have a clean plate, then you typically have to paint something in. And if you have to paint it in multiple frames, it can be a huge pain. So the next shot is her reading, and this is her going up. So at the right point, she jumps, and obviously she's not, she can't fly, so she goes up and then falls back. But we only need up to the point where she jumps in the air. And then the last one is her standing there and landing on the couch. So she's gonna go up as high as she can go and then fall on the couch. And it was her idea to have her legs crossed. I think she uh, did a great job. The idea is that, oh, she flies all the time and this is easy, boom, she comes down. All right, next up is uh, the portal. And we've got this shot of the portal, which makes no sense because there's no portal there. And then we have a clean plate. Now, one thing that I did make a mistake on here is I didn't notice that this shadow was there as someone was standing there. So this is why you hire a visual effects supervisor to tell that person to get out of the scene. I just turned the camera on and we were standing around yakking and I wasn't paying attention. My fault. All right, and then the last one 
is a super kid and we've got him holding a broom handle and he's pretending to lift something heavy like the car. Uh, the broom handle ended up being a bit of a problem because this edge sticks out a little bit too much, and I'll show you that. And we have him with his father coming in, and then this is where we're going to lift the car. So that's the raw footage. Now let's go look at it all put together. So the first thing that happens is we have a portal that comes up, and this I just did this in After Effects. You can do this with any lens flare kind of thing. Um, I did this transparent in, in After Effects, and I used uh, these real lens flares, which look great from Red Giant. And if we go to the wrench and show transparency grid, you can see actually that it is transparent. And you might be able to get away with some of this by putting it on a layer and changing it to a different blend mode like screen. Um, and, and you could do this with any shape. Uh, you could draw this in Photoshop uh, and just stick it over top. It doesn't have to be a video. The, the next is them and they've got a crop on them. So if I turn the portal off, you can see them being chopped off and in the effects I've got the crop. And by the way, I'm using the Essentials workspace. This is a new workspace. And you can see the crop effect just cuts them off. And if we turn the portal back on and the crop back on, it looks like they're emerging from the portal. They're not. I just lined up the portal with the edge. And on set, um, I recorded all this with my Ninja V recorder monitor, and I put a rubber band around that part of the monitor. And my wife's job was to look at that and imagine that there was the portal there. So to check that the kids were stepping in and out correctly. What you can't see is that there's a tiny little white rock in the grass for them to visually see where they should be stepping over. We rehearsed this about seven or eight times before we even rolled because I knew once he got wet, um, to get him dried off and get a change of clothes, we didn't have a lot of time. So I said, we only have one take of this. So I wanted the timing to be good. So that's how we're doing that. And if I turn off the clean plate in the back, you can see it makes no sense. It's just a portal in black. And if we just turn on the clean plate, that's the clean plate. And I wanna show you that this, this is the kind of idea, if I wanted to cut his head off, and I didn't have a clean plate, and I used something like an opacity mask, and I inverted that, sure, I can cut off his head, but that's where the black hole is. So people ask me, well, how do you cut someone up? That way, just draw a mask around them. But how do you fill it in? Ah, you have two choices. Paint it in Photoshop so you'd have to clone everything, or turn on your clean plate. So that's the clean plate right there. That's the different leaves that are in the background. And now he's got no head. Obviously, we, we want him to have a head, so I'll delete that. But that's how that works. It's really, really simple. Oh, I gotta turn the turn the crop back on, and that way he disappears. We don't see his dad dumping water all over. Okay, so that's the portal effect: a crop and a clean background. Very simple. Now the flying girl, we see her ready to jump, and she jumps up. And if I turn off the clean plate. Then we've got her flying up. And that's really this image here, and I'm using transform, and you can see it's just moving the position there. What I'm doing here is to, to, to get the motion blur is I'm changing this, let me just open this up a bit. This use compositions, and I'm changing the shutter angle to 300 to give that motion blur. Because in the real footage, she's also blurring. You can see it. she's blurring as she's jumping up. So I'm also blurring the image. 
Okay, so you're probably wondering, well, how did you go from a video to an image? Well, take a still image into Photoshop and cut her out of the background. And Photoshop has amazing tools to recognize her and then we can tweak the mask that it, or the selection that it makes. So all I did was find the place where she's jumping in the air, the highest, like there, and then click this button to export out a frame. Now let's go to Photoshop and I'll open up a frame that I did earlier. So this is her jumping in the air. I don't mind that her hand is out because she's gonna keep going, so I don't need her hand to be in. Now I did need her feet to be in. I actually did tests on this with me. You don't wanna see that footage. But I framed, the original test I did with me, I framed incorrectly and my feet were cut off. So when I jumped in the air, uh, my the bottoms of my feet were missing. So I made sure when I shot this that you could see her feet the whole time. Okay, so this button here, this tool is the object selection tool. And I want you to watch right here, object finder. See that's going around. It's actually finding all of the objects in here and it's gonna make it easier for you to find her. Now you don't have to wait for that to find everyone. You could just click on her, but I wanna show you how amazing Photoshop is at recognizing objects in here. And when that's finished turning around, you can click on this and see everything that it found, or you can mouse over, like it found the pillow, it found the book. And if I click on her, it found her. So I'll click one more time and it's going to refine this selection. So Photoshop is working even harder now to find the edges of what I want. And it's gonna make a selection. That's that little jaggy selection called marching ants that makes the selection. I like to turn this into a mask, just possibly to tweak some things because you can see that uh, it might've missed some stuff. So that's a selection. If you go to the top and choose select and mask, it's going to open up select and mask. And here we could smooth the edges if we wanted a little bit. I don't wanna feather this, I wanna keep this fairly tight. But I don't wanna make this a selection, I wanna make this a layer mask. So click OK, and what you end up with is her out of the background in a mask. If you hold the Alt key on Windows option on Mac and click on the mask, you can see the mask. And you have to make sure when you're working with this that you're clicking on the right thing. And I'm gonna be clicking on the mask. Now I've got some quick keyboard shortcuts for masking. B, D, X, zero. B, grab a brush. D, default the, the colors. X, flip it so black is in the front. Zero to make the, the uh, brush 100% opacity. Let's do that. B, D, X, zero. And now I've got my brush. And I can see over here, I'm just using my scroll wheel. I can see that it, it found, it made a mistake in this area. So I make sure that I'm on my mask and now I can paint this in. And the reason I like doing this with a mask is if I make a mistake over here, black is in the front. If I hit the X key, it's going to flip those colors. So if I paint with white now, I can paint that edge back in. They can see something there. So X, it means that I don't have to constantly pick the color. I can have my left uh, hand on the X key and my right hand on my brush or trackpad or mouse or, or Wacom and paint away. And then I'll do the opposite over here. It made a mistake, so I'll make sure I'm painting white in here to fix that. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to blur so much. So if we turn this on and off, you can see there it is. Now the next thing I'll do is I'll save this as a new image. So I exported out a JPEG, but I'm gonna now save this as a .psd file. Uh, for two reasons. First of all, I always have the mask, so if I need to fix it, I can fix the mask. The biggest reason though is, 
If I make this a JPEG or a ping and I change the size of this, I will have to reposition it once I put it back into Premiere Pro. If you leave it as a giant Photoshop file with the background removed, when you drop this in, you don't have to reposition it. It's going to drop right in. So let's go back to Premiere Pro and here is the image. So the image is just placed right on top of that. And in the transform tools, so that's where she is. And you can see there is no blur. And when I add the transform, I'm changing the position information. I'm not changing anything else. There's only two keyframes. This is the original position now. And remember, I, I used, I turned this off and changed that to 300 shutter angle so it would blur. And then I just kept moving this up until her feet disappear. So she disappears here, and if we turn the clean plate on, she's gone. Same thing here, I found the point Oh, flying girl, there she is. So I found the point where she was as high in the air, but I wanted her hand. The last time I didn't care that her hand was cut off because it was going up. But if I cut her hand off now, it's gonna be gone when she comes down. So I'll, I'll actually bring this down to where her hand is there. And then I'll do the same thing. Export this out to Photoshop cut it, uh, it, it will be on its new layer and save this as a PSD. So that's what we're seeing here is another Photoshop file. The same thing with transform. And I've got two keyframes where she started and then where she ended. And then where she ends, that's where the new video comes in. So just like the other one where she's flying in the air here, and the still image takes over, the same thing is going to occur here, is that she gets to that point, and now that's the video. But because she did such a good job jumping in the air, remember in the, in the raw footage, I had her rock her arms and really jump in the air to fall on the couch. Because she did that, I mean, in my test version, I got maybe three inches off the couch, but she did such a great job and then she bounced and ended up right there. All right. Now, I'll just show, show you that, um, that Photoshop file. This is, again, what I did here is, is I took this and I just cut that out because without that, if I take this out, then you'll see the mistake is that when she goes up, the clean plate, which I shot incorrectly, has no book and then the book appears. So I had to make sure the book was there and dropped it in. This is all a still image, not a video of just the book sitting there. Oops, my bad. I mean, again, a visual effects uh, supervisor would have said, okay, we need the book in there. The tricky part was with all the movement, of her on the couch, that book was in three different positions and uh, it was a little tricky, but I was able to fix it. Now let's look at the last one. This was the, the trickiest one to do. This is just straight up video up to this point. Now you'll notice that, that we just have one track here and that's because this is a nested clip. And the reason I nested this clip was I wanted to make sure you didn't see the wheel over here. So if I go back to 100% scale, you actually see that this, this cut off. I'm gonna double click on this and open this up. You don't need to do this. I just, again, made another mistake. The problem you might see here is the wheels are not in the frame. So when I was framing this, I was looking at him and I framed him in the center in a composition that made sense for him. But I didn't think of, well, when the car comes in, I don't see the bottom of the wheel. I don't see the, the other part of the wheel. 
What should I have done? I should have pushed out a lot more. That would have made him smaller on the frame, but at least the whole car would have been in. So how did I get the bottom of the wheel here if it's cut out of the frame? Photoshop. So let's go look at, at what I had to do for the car edit. So that's the car there and uh, the windows, which we'll get to in a second. I had to, to rebuild the bottom of this. So I took some of the top and I placed it down here in the bottom. This had a, a lighter color, so then I had to paint the darker shadow in, and then I had to paint some of the bottom in, clone some of that, so you can see some of that is from here. Uh, bottom line is, if I paid attention of the frame, I wouldn't have to do that. Cutting the car out would have been the same as cutting out the girl. So I would take the whole car, click on it, it would remove the car, make a PSD, and bring it back in here. Then we have the idea, the problem of these gosh darn windows. So what happened was, um, again, if I was paying attention, I would have had the windows rolled down. The windows are rolled up. So when I cut the car out in Photoshop, I cut the windows out completely. And the problem with that is over here, the windows closed. So there's a, a lightness with that, and I had to match that here. So I basically have the car windows on their own and the car here. So they, they're two separate files, and that's what this uh, car edit is, the windows. So I don't need the windows here, but I need them there. And if you wanna know what the opacity is, it's 2% opacity, but it made a difference. Now, that being said, I still, there, there is still a little bit of a jump between that. Okay. Now, the other thing I had to do is when I cut the car out, what happens to the shadow? Right now, the shadow is almost black underneath. And the further something gets away from the ground, the lighter it's going to get. Oh boy. So here's the shadow. What I had to do was draw a mask around that shadow. Not easy. So I, I, I basically created a black layer, set it to multiply, and then drew a mask around this area here and you'll see the opacity change from 100% to 45%. And it's, it's only distracting once I point it out to you, but I had to do something other than making the black come over. Now you can see the wheels over here, that's the problem I was telling you about before, that when he lifts the car, The edge of that is there, so it was poking out at the wheel. So I, I changed the, the position. So as he's lifting the car, the car's sliding to one side, but it opens that area up in here, which I didn't want. So I took the whole thing, and then I scaled that up 109% so that you don't see that and then I can move that whole thing around in here. So, the car is an image, and again, I've got transform on it. You don't see much motion blur. Um, there is a little bit of motion blur, but we've got three things here. We've got the car, which is the Photoshop file on the top. We've got the shadow, that's there, and then we've got him on the bottom. We didn't need a clean plate with this. And I was matching where he was going with that broom handle. And then he pulls it up at the last minute. You can see a little bit of motion blur there. Oh, and you can see a little bit of the, the broom handle where I'm missing that. Okay, so this is 
family effects. This is easier. This is the hardest of the three, but this is easier than industrial light magic. Two things that are wrong with this, if you really, really want to be picky, is you should see the bottom of the car. I mean, in three dimensions, you don't see the bottom of the car because the plane of the car is lower. But as that gets higher, the plane of the car of the bottom, you actually see that. So you should see the undercarriage of the car. <laughs> Do I care? Well, for crying out loud, no. The other one is, he should be in shadow. If he's underneath the car lifting it up, then the car would be like an umbrella, it would be over top of him. But hey, for a quick and easy effect, there he goes and he lifts the car. So this was the hardest one. I think the portal and the flying girl are the kinds of things that, that people love to do. And I will admit to you one thing is that if we go to a super kid, And so changing the position of that of that car, you can see all these keyframes in here. You can do that by hand. So you can set a position and a rotation keyframe, and you're following them up, following them up, following him up. Um, I actually used After Effects. Let me just show you really quick tracking. You don't have to do this. You can do this all in Premiere Pro, but if you are interested in tracking, you can actually copy right from Premiere Pro. So that's um, a clip that I copied. You can copy and paste the whole layer, the whole thing. That That's actually what I did. I had the Photoshop file and I had him doing this and I copied and pasted directly into a new composition in uh, After Effects. Instead of importing and all of that stuff, copying and pasting, and then I, I'm not a fan of Dynamic Link because that always breaks. So I'll just create a new project, create a new comp down here at the bottom, and I know that this is 19, 20, 10, 80. And if you just paste, he's pasted in the, in the correct spot, but he's way over there. So what you can do if you just look for the tracker click on, make sure that the clip is selected, track motion, position and rotation. And the tricky part here is moving these. And I'm just using my scroll wheel and then holding the space bar and these two targets. It's a little bit tricky to move these, but if you move into the middle, you can drag this down if you drag this a little bit more, you can drag his hand, and then the outer one is the, the area it's looking. Same thing here, drag from the middle, drag this around his hand, drag this up, shift backslash to zoom out, and now you can track forward. So it begins to track his hands, But I think you get the idea. So you can see the trackers are following. And the reason I don't start at the beginning is his hands are in the grass and I want the cleanest part of his hands. So I start the tracking a late, later and then you can track backwards and forwards. It, it did make a mistake when the tracker, when he moves very quick from here to there, the trackers were left behind. He was moving so fast that the trackers were kind of moving around down here, so I had to fix it. But anyway, you, you can track that, and then you you bring in the Photoshop file, and that would be selectable here. Right now, I only have that one layer. Um, and if you wanna know how I got all of this back in to Premiere Pro, you can actually export out from After Effects File Export Premiere Pro Project. Now, 
not everything will be translated directly into uh, Premiere Pro, but that's how I got that tracking data. I, I cheated a little bit in that only because I didn't want to have to work. But you could use the transform command and, and do it frame by frame and move that car so it follows it uh, up directly. If you are exporting stuff from After Effects to Premiere Pro, you might run into an issue where things like this opacity uh, came up instead of with a number, it came up with an error. And that's just part of the translation problem. There's no way to fix that. I just had to delete the whatever it brought in and then fix it. I actually had to do that for the car. The transparency was broken. So though you can use After Effects, but I'm showing you here how you can do all of these do-it-yourself visual effects right inside Premiere Pro. The portal stuff, pff, that's so easy. The flying girl, you could do that for somebody just jumping out on, on the backyard and, and doing this, and then you make them fly away as long as you have a clean plate. Always remember, give yourself a clean plate. Just let the camera sit there and shoot. You could be doing this on a phone with a tripod. Um, and last thing is your question, can you move the camera? Oh, you can move the camera but then you break all of this. This is all meant for static cameras. Moving the camera introduces many, many issues. You would have to introduce rotoscoping or you'd have to rent motion control cameras. And it, there's no way to get two, two movements <clears throat> with just a regular camera, even with it like a, uh, um, a gimbal, a programmable gimbal. Those gimbals that you have, doesn't matter if they're like, you know, $3,000, they're not frame accurate. So you can't program a gimbal to do that movement and then get your clean plate and it will work. They won't be accurate. Motion control cameras are these giant machines like manufacturing machines that have pixel accuracy. So bottom line is don't move the camera. That's why these are DIY simple visual effects. Have some fun with your family uh, with a portal or flying or jumping or coming down from the ceiling. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you out in the yard and start jumping around like a, a wild person recording yourself flying, zooming, running as fast as you can.